every video I made on a dual display docking station for MacBooks have taken off. So it's no secret that people like yourself are looking to hook up multiple monitors up to your MacBook. Because I made so many of these videos over the past three years, I figured I'd make this one updated video going through all of my favorite docks in 2024 that I would still recommend if you're looking to run multiple monitors on your MacBook from one cable. I'll also go through pros and cons as well as include the links to amazing prices for each of these docks. I want to make it easy for you, so let's get started. I'm first going to talk about the similarities between all of the docks. Today we'll be looking at the BenQ B Creatus, the Mini Sapuru dock, and the Tobin One dock, but not exactly in that order. I've linked all my previous videos on all of the docks in the description down below, so if you want more information on a specific one, go ahead and check that out. Now, all of these docks will achieve the same function. They'll allow you to hook up one cable to your MacBook and output up to three monitors at a time in an independent display mode, meaning you can use each display separately and it won't be mirrored. By nature, MacBooks are unable to display multiple monitors when hooking up to an external dock. You can only have one monitor in an independent display mode for every Thunderbolt port that you have on your MacBook. This is just the way it is and has been thanks to Apple. To get around that, companies have found a clever way to create duplicate displays by using a piece of software called the DisplayLink driver and having hardware that is compatible with this driver you can easily achieve this. Now you can't just download the DisplayLink driver and use any dock. As I mentioned, this must be DisplayLink certified and you'll usually see this in the description of the dock itself. I cover the three best DisplayLink compatible docks in this video. So that's one thing that they all have in common. Do keep in mind when using any dock that requires the DisplayLink driver, you will need to enable screen recording for the driver itself. That's just the way it is. This is critical for the functioning of the dock and only uses it to replicate your screens and nothing else. If that's not enough to encourage you, DisplayLink is backed by Synaptex, a leader in the technology industry. Design-wise, all of these docks look great. If I were to rank these on a scale of best looking to worst looking, well, I'd have the B-Creatus as number one, the Tobin one as number two, and of course the Mini Sapuru as number three. And that's just my opinion. But it's not just looks alone that we need to focus on. So the Mini Sapuru is great. It works right out of the box after installing the DisplayLink driver, and I've had no issues connecting my monitors to it. We have three ports for displays, an HDMI, a DisplayPort, and your third monitor can be HDMI or DisplayPort. They can all run at 4K 60Hz. That's a plus. The form factor is incredible, and between the three docks, it's the smallest form factor and great for those who have limited desk space. Downside, it doesn't look that great. but. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, right? We do have a gigabit ethernet port on the back and one fast charging USB-C port, but most of the ports are on the front. This includes two USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 ports, one USB-C 3.2 Gen 1 port, and two USB-A 2.0 ports. Having all of these on the front is not ideal in my opinion. I would rather have most of them on the back to keep my desk neat and tidy, and also have cables hidden for things like mice or keyboards. The headphone jack is also on the front, which provides easy access. So this dock has a lot of connections Activity, it's just designed differently than the others. Whether that's a good or bad thing is completely up to you. What I will say is that it is the cheapest dock among the three. So if those shortcomings are palpable for the price, you'd probably want to go with this dock. At the moment, it's 160 brand new on Amazon using the link in my description. To summarize, we have three monitors for both Mac and Windows. We have a gigabit ethernet port, one USB-C power delivery only port, two USB-A 3.2 ports, two USB-A 2.0 ports, one USB-C 3.2 port, and a headphone jack. The Tobin one is a beautifully crafted dock and I love the overall square design of it. It looks great on my desk and it also doesn't take up much space. Although the Mini Sapuru is flatter, it's also longer and oddly shaped. Again, we have three ports for displays, but this time around we have more connectivity options. All three ports support either HDMI or DisplayPort connections as opposed to the limited options on the Mini Sapuru. These displays can also run at 4K 60Hz 
But one notable difference is that you can hook up up to four displays when using a Windows machine. MacBooks are still limited to three displays. We also have a USB 3.2 port and a gigabit ethernet port on the back. I like the Tobin one because it has a lot of connectivity options. However, again, most of these ports are on the front, which I'm not a fan of. But we do have three USB-A 3.2 ports on the front, two USB-C 3.0 ports, a headphone jack, and this last feature sets it apart from the other two, an SD card and micro SD card reader. Not sure why the other docks did not include this critical feature. Mind you, the newer MacBooks have an SD port already located on them, but I use this with an older MacBook and a MacBook Air M1 that doesn't have it built in, so this is a much needed addition. Price wise, it's definitely a bit more expensive than the Mini Sapporo at around $229, but I do feel that you get the best bang for your buck with this one. The company also runs promos on Amazon quite often, and you can see that there are usually coupons available when using my links. All right. So to summarize, we have three monitors for Mac and four monitors for Windows machines, a gigabit ethernet port, four USB-A 3.2 ports, two USB-C 3.0 ports, an SD and micro SD card reader, and of course, a headphone jack. Okay, the last and final dock is the BenQ B Creatus, and this one stands out from the rest depending on what you value. Design wise, the B Creatus dock by BenQ is just as good and somewhat similar to the Tobin one design, if not a bit better. I love the space gray and the subtle green accent power button. This look is sleek and minimal, so it also won't take a ton of space up on your desk. Now, a couple of huge advantages over the other docks. First, it supports two different input devices. Not only that, it will allow you to run three monitors at 4K and you can have a second input device that can output at 8K 60Hz or 4K 120Hz. Now that is a huge win for those who are gamers and want a separate monitor to take gaming breaks without sacrificing resolution. For the three monitors, we have two HDMI outputs and one DisplayPort output. For the two inputs, we have a USB-C Thunderbolt for your computer and an HDMI out for a second device that supports up to 8K resolution. On the back, we have two USB-A ports for your mice and or keyboard, a gigabit ethernet port, and one high-speed USB-A 3.0 port. On the front, we have two more USB-A 3.0 ports and one USB-C 36 watt charging port. Now, port-wise, this doesn't come with much compared to the other docks that I've talked about. So if you're looking at plugging in multiple devices, you might want to plan that out first to ensure that you have enough or get a USB hub to expand the connectivity. Also, there's no SD card reader like the Tobin one, which you'll have to consider. Price-wise, this is the most expensive out of all the docks I've covered. We're looking at $299, but again, there are sometimes promotions on Amazon that bring this down a bit. So to summarize, we have three monitors running at 4K 60Hz for your laptop or desktop input and 8K 60Hz or 4K 120Hz for your secondary input like a gaming console. A gigabit ethernet port, two USB-A 2.0 ports, three USB-A 3.0 ports, one USB-C 3.0 port, and of course, a headphone jack. So there you have it. I broke down the three docks and what each one has in terms of functionality. If you're looking for a dock, you need to first figure out what you actually value the most. If it's more ports, then the BenQ is probably not the one. If it's gaming, then it probably is. Once you know what you want and how you can adjust for the other minor things, then the decision is pretty much made. My one suggestion is to not focus on price alone. A cheaper dock doesn't mean it's going to give you everything you need, nor will a more expensive dock. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful to you. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. I will do my best to answer them for you. My name is J.I., thank you for watching and thank you for kicking it with me.